going to talk about a very interesting story that popped up this morning. Five-star McCour Maker has committed to Howard. That is an HBCU. He is the first five-star to ever do it. And it is incredibly interesting. I, I saw what this. What is he this, ranked in the top top basketball guys? I mean, he's he's not just a five-star. He's he's ranked up there, right? He's Yeah, he's on up there. He's, I don't think, I mean, he's not like a, a top five guy. But no, he's, but I mean, he's like a top 20 guy. He yeah no absolutely I mean he's a five star there's there's not that many of those um, yeah let's see da, 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 I'm reading the article here he said uh, we're, let's see Blakeney said we're not sure what this is going to look like but we're beyond excited uh, he planned to announce his college decision on July 9th which is the South Sudan Independence Day uh, this is the tweet that he sent out he said I was the first to announce my visit to Howard and other others started to dream what if. I needed to make the HBCU movement real so that others will follow. I hope I inspire guys like Mikey Williams to join me on this journey. I am committing to Howard U and Coach Kenny Blakeney. He's the number 16 player in the ESPN 100. And so there you go. this is a massive, massive Hell issue. Hell yes. Uh, and not, not an issue. This is... Uh, no, it's just, a massive deal. It, it, it's not an yes, it, it's... Uh, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, we haven't seen anything like this because typically it doesn't happen. He had Kentucky, Memphis, and Kansas all going after him. That's right. And, and he chose Howard over them. That is, this is a big deal. Yep. So, what what were your thoughts when you first saw this? Because I, I had no idea how to react. I, d- I do think this is the first of, of, of a new trend that's going to start happening more often than not. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I think I think a lot, especially with the culture and what we're seeing going on in our country today, I I think a lot of these historical all black schools are going to start pulling big time recruits in big time athletics. Um, there was a there was a Ringer podcast this week on the NFL Ringer show where Deshaun Watson was on there and he was asked, you know, did you ever consider going to any of these HBC schools? And he said no. He went to Clemson, obviously. He said, and I probably wouldn't have, but none of them even talked to me. And I think they saw, you know, you only have so many recruiting resources, so you can't really waste a lot of time on guys that you think are going to go play major D1 ball. But I, we're getting to a point where it's worth at least reaching out to these top-tier guys to say, hey, are you, are you interested? And if they're interested, then you put the resources together. It costs you nothing to find out if they're interested or not. And uh, and, and you try to start, you know, recruiting them and, and getting them to commit and buy in, uh, you know, with Black Lives Matter and what's going on in our country. I think I think this is going to be pretty exciting. Yes. I, I can't wait to see what this is going to look like. Um, just to give everybody an idea of how big of a difference this is, this move to Howard in Ken Palm's ratings, like obviously he has his – preseason ratings and whatnot, but right. it moves them from number 320-something. There's right. there's only 350-some-odd schools. Yeah, pretty but much it, DFL. And it moves them all the way up into the 250s. Yeah. Like, that is... One it, player can make 70 that 70-something, yeah, it's insane. In basketball. Uh, Damien said, did Howard get paid under the table, too? Uh, no, we, we've discussed, you know, how do you make that work? Because if he's a five-star, you know he's worth something. We, we know he's getting something if we really understand how the sausage is made in college athletics. And, and I was, that was the first thing that came to mind is, is he turning down obscene amounts of money for a cause? Or, I mean, I have to expect that Howard has plenty of alumni that have been extremely successful, yes. love basketball, and have a lot of pride in the school in which they went. And they could generate the funds needed, mainly because they're not generating them for twelve of the, you know, the the the, the entire roster basically. Yeah, it's just you go one to Duke, guy. you go to Kentucky, everybody on the roster is on the take. Howard probably not like that. Can you generate enough funds? Can you pass the plate enough to to get one or two of these guys? I think you can. And if you I just think get- you can pretty quick, and you really don't have to get that deep into every alumni's pocket to do it. Ben uh, Ben said Howard is better than Georgetown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably so. <laughs> you know what? That's tough for Georgetown. Uh, dude, we, we've talked about this in the past. 
I want Georgetown to be so good now with with Patrick Ewing. Yeah. yeah, with with Patrick taking over that program and what he's just growing up loving that guy. I, I want good things for Georgetown, but you know, it is what it is. Maybe it's, maybe Patrick can turn it around and get some of these big time recruits. We shall see. But Howard is getting it done. They uh, Howard, they knocked Howard, this out. Howard got this one done, and yeah. the fact that he called, make called out another player by name, saying maybe we can get these guys. Does he have connections? Are they friends? I'm sure they've played AAU ball. All these guys in the AAU circle know each other. They're very close. It's a very small knit. You know, there's a hundred kids worth a damn in the AAU that are going to go play college ball. All hundred of them know one another. Okay. Yes. So is there a relationship where he thinks they can make that work? I, I mean, that would be amazing I, if they pulled yeah. another big four star guy or whatever, that would, I mean, that would be amazing. You're looking at a potential tournament team. Yes. You know, you, you definitely are like they, it was especially in, in their conference, right? That's so, it. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, no we'll, doubt. we'll see. Uh, but th- this one guy changes everything. In for a basketball, that basketball game program. in which there are only five men on a court at one time. Yes. yes. One monster can totally change your stars. It is really, really interesting. For I'm sure. excited. I'm I'm Me really too. excited to see this. I want to see what it's going to look like. I want to I want see, to see it play out. Like I wonder. A lot of I wonder about on the, the coaching staff now, though. I, I will tell you oh, that yes. because now you are responsible for the molding of this of this guy and preparing him not just for the tournament and for your team and your season, but preparing him for the NF uh, the NBA. Yeah, for the pros, Damian. That's a lot of pressure. No, it's definitely that. Damian jumped in and said Howard is better than Yale. It let's it, look, Georgetown. If we're talking basketball, yeah, absolutely. Maybe as a school, better. Uh, Yale, Yale's basketball team's really, really good. Yeah, so, Yale's basketball team's made tournaments and won tournament games, haven't they? Yes, yes. They, they they've are, upset some guys in the past. They, I, they've got a phenomenal coach. They are. That's tough. That's yeah. tough. Yeah. And so, but hey, I mean, we'll see. This year's a whole lot hey, different. I don't know how many five stars Yale's pulled in the past, though. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's what different. I'm saying. It changes things up a little bit. Yes. Let's uh, let's move to the NFL very quickly. 